before I met you, um, a lot of people's advice was like, you know, as a disabled person, as somebody coming from a disability perspective, you've got to get him. You've got to get him. <laughs> and how can I get anyone with a laugh like that? Do you know what I mean? You are like a mad scientist, with all respect to the mad people in the room. Um, and uh, absolutely, it, it, uh, it, it's brilliant. And what we've just seen is incredible, because it's like every horror and sci-fi film I've ever seen. There were stills from it. And, um, and that, that really fascinated me. What, the more that I read about you and the more since I've talked to you and uh, listened to what you said today, what fascinates me is that I think, in terms of a disability perspective and where you're coming from, I think we have a lot of common ground. And that was kind of what I wanted to talk to you about this evening. Um, and in terms of that, what I'm thinking of is that for disabled people often, or well, for all of us really, the body is such a focus of attention, the physical body, what we can and we can't do. Um, what fascinates me is that for, for us, um, the physical body, um, the way that it is objectified, is that we are patients, we are being done to. Um, the way that you explore and look at the body, it becomes art and genius and something revolutionary. And and I think that's I think that's in a way where we're coming from the same point because things like Dada are about a celebration of the body. And I wanted to ask you, this is my, my first question really, is, so Dada celebrates diversity, celebrates different and different bodies, people who um, you know, do not fit into whatever norm uh, means to any of us. You're saying that the body is obsolete. Here we are at a festival celebrating the body. You don't think, <laughs> What, what do you say to that? What do you reckon? How do you, is there a contradiction there? Yeah. Well, well, it, it is a question that, that comes up. And but w when I say the body is obsolete, I mean this particular body with these this form and these functions. I don't mean that somehow we can do without a body, um, or that somehow intelligence can be you know disconnected from an embodied operational kind of entity. Um, but, uh, you know, I've always been fascinated by alternate anatomical architectures, not only insects and animals, but um, differently enabled people. And whether you're disabled and differently enabled or whether, uh, you know, you're experimenting with additional sensory input, um, you know, through some, some, some of the recent scientific research being done in that. Uh, I, I'm fascinated by um, how the body can uh, manage uh, with uh, different kinds of operational possibilities and sensing possibilities. And I've been fascinated by the fact that, you know, yeah, back, Bats navigate essentially by emitting ultrasound, uh, ultrasound waves. Uh, snakes uh, essentially see, you know, in infrared. Um, uh, a dog seen black and white. I I'm fascinated by sort of differently enabled uh, living creatures, um, and also how, um, in a sense, um, our our disabled people really. Um, are the closest to a cyborg body, a genuine cyborg body, <coughs> excuse me, than these kind of simplistic gestures done by, by some artists. Uh, because you have to manage this on a day-to-day -day basis. You have to move your body around in ways that are different from a bipedal, you know, locomot locomoting body. Uh, and I'm fascinated by, by how we can also, of course, construct social spaces that allow for that, that kind of difference. Um, and uh, you quickly discover with when you have some impediment, and I've had some surgeries on my arms, and, and my arms become wrapped up and numb, and, and I can't use it. And all of a sudden, you know, how do you manage? Um, we had, uh, um, uh, at Sussex University, I gave a talk once, and um, uh, one of the professors there had a, his wife, uh, 
was, was paralyzed. In fact, the only way they could communicate was by her blinking her eyes. So it was only through her eye movements and blinking that she could communicate. And um, we, we actually, she was fascinated by, because I, I had demonstrated the, the muscle stimulation system, and she was fascinated and wanted to try this. And we attached the electrodes on her arm, only four channels of electrical stimulation, but for the first time since her paralysis, her arm could move up, her arm could bend, her hand could open and close. Now, they were rudimentary movements that weren't going to, uh, you know, not going to help her a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, with some paralysed people now, they can animate their bodies uh, through computer-controlled muscle stimulation systems. Mm -hmm.